We are live. It, it what's what's it, day seven? We are on day, day seven, seven of the A Day Confidence Climb, and today's Transformation Tuesday. Wow! Good morning. We're really excited to see you here today. We're gonna talk about another element of confidence. Have you ever felt bloated in your life? And and when you felt bloated, how did you feel? We actually had a pretty um. My, my, whenever I felt bloated, my stomach felt like this. Yeah. And we, we had a pretty similar conversation about it this morning. Yeah. Because, you know, like, especially if you have found that you have judged yourself in the past for, you know, how you look or how you feel. Can you resonate with this, by the way? If this is you, just go ahead and drop Amy in the chat so we can see you. Mm. I'll tell you, this morning I woke up, you guys, and I felt so fat. And as you're watching this, you might be saying, oh, sorry, get over it, right? Like, what are you talking about? We, if you felt that way before, it doesn't matter where you're at in the process. The feeling still feels the same. It still feels like shit. You know, so it actually took me like three hours to get my mind out of it. Um, however, today's conversation is going to be fire because we're going to be, you know, talking about everything that has to do with bloating and um, the brain gut connection and what does one have to do with the other. And one thing is for sure is that when we feel like our physical being is does not match what we know we truly bring to the table it lowers our level of confidence and yesterday we started off the week by empowering you by the way I want you to drop in a chat where are you currently at on the scale of 1 to 18 based on how you've shown up over the last six days I hope that you're feeling proud of yourself and I hope that you're able to create some pretty good momentum um, going into, you know, this week. Today, we're going to take a very deep dive. Is there anything that you want to say before we... Yeah, I, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, the connection between bloating and confidence. Now, we live in a society and I do also believe that there's a level of love we should have for ourselves regardless um, of whether or not we're bloated. However, uh, the reality is when we feel a certain way about our bodies, um, it's likely because we've treated ourselves a certain way, not necessarily just because what it looks like. It's also what it feels like. So bloating is more of a feeling too than just a, an appearance. Mm. And let me say two things about appearance. When you feel like you look good, you show up differently because you know the way that you operate when you see somebody that looks good to you, right? So it makes sense that you want to look good to you. Because you pay more attention to people that look good to you. So if you look better, you will be paid more attention to. You will get more opportunities. You will get more dates, whatever, right? You will get a better job opportunity. It's the reality, okay? It's very surface level. But the truth is that the only thing that we have to connect with somebody on or to kind of make an assessment about the person that we are meeting is two things, their appearance and energy. Because before so we, good. because before we open our mouths, that's all you have to go off of. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a first impression on somebody. The look is like, I would, I would say the look is 30% of it. The energy is 70% of it. But I would say a lot of people are so disconnected. They don't understand energy. So it's, it'd be more than that. I'm totally making up percentages right now. These are not. 60% these are not, of stats are completely made up. Who said that? 60% of all stats are 100% made up. I don't know. No. Um, 
But anywho, these are not scientific stats. These are just like approximates based on my own personal experience of life. But the other thing about uh, looking good and feeling good is usually if we feel like d down on ourselves because we're overweight or we look a certain way or we have love handles or we have flabbiness or, or whatever, it's because we have disrespected ourselves through what we've eaten, through how we've talked to ourselves, through the things that we've consumed mentally, physically. And when you abuse yourself in that way by feeding yourself McDonald's, I'm not hating on anybody who eats fast food. I used to eat Taco Bell three, day, three times a week. Like I'm not hating, but what I'm saying is it is, is a physical abuse to yourself because it, it's, it's shitty food, tastes delicious, of course, and it, it's fast and it's easy and it's cheap. So when we put those things on our body and we know it's not the best thing for us, or when we bully ourselves and we know that that's not the best thing for us, we're disrespecting ourselves. Of course, we're not going to appreciate where we're at physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, right? So when we talk about bloating, I'm going to bring it back around. When we talk about bloating or the feeling that you have or the look that you have when you're bloated is not the best representation of who you know you are, mm -hmm. right? So we carry on. So we carry on. So we carry on. Okay. So, you know, you've heard us talk about the correlation between inflammation and bloating. However, if we're being honest, gut health is definitely not our area of expertise. And we wanted to uh, bring you today a very special guest. If you've done one of our more recent events, then you might have had the pleasure of meeting this person. I know that if you have then you definitely loved her because there's a reason why we reached back out to this person. So with a very proper introduction, and before I give you this introduction, I want you to know that this badass is joining us today from Antigua. Like she's on vacation. Talk about commitment. She's currently in a conference room at the hotel. So loud and proud, like ES Army. Like you got to like double up your love and energy today, okay? Because Let me see you in the chat. Talk about commitment to your pursuit of confidence and betterment. So that being said, on today's episode, we are going to be sharing with you Dr. Holly Donahue, who is a licensed board certified doctor of naturopathic medicine at the state of New Hampshire, though she's streaming us live from the Caribbean today. Dr. Donahue is on a mission to help patients find joy and good health so that they can perform their best lives and thrive. So that being said, all the way from Antigua, Florida, wherever you're at, Hey, hey! Hey, guys! Thank you so much. So oh, great. good. So okay. So you're joining. Okay. How is Antigua, by the way? It's beautiful. I wish I could show you, but I guess you can't see all those windows, but it's heaven. It's is my the water crystal clear? I was 12 years old. Can you hear me? Is, is the water crystal clear there? Yes. Oh. So beautiful, man, you're, you're committed and we really appreciate you being here today. I don't know if you, if you're able to see the hearts and in and, and the comments, um, I know that today is going to be absolute fire. So, okay, let's get right to it. My first question for you is I can imagine that, you know, like you don't just wake up one day and say, Oh, like, let me just, you know, be like a naturopathic doctor like what is your story behind that inspiration in the first place what led you to that I love this question and Aaron actually led into it so for years I worked in the apparel industry and naturopathic medicine saved my life and I was seeing a naturopath a whole host of practitioners and I suffered through depression and I just was not going to take a pill for a meal. There's no opinion that people need to do that. It's okay. There's a time and a place for all kinds of medicine. And I always want people to realize that. And my naturopath said to me, 
we need more naturopaths. We need more natural healers. And you would be amazing. And you know what I said to him? I'm not going back to school. I love what I do. Because here's the soup, exactly what Aaron said. I used to make people feel good with the clothes that they wear, right? Mm. But now I work on people's health and energy. And right before I came down here, I had four calls where patients don't need to see me anymore. And they're sending their friends because now they feel like their best self. And I've given them tools to do that. So that's how I became a naturopath. I just gave you the clear cut story. But I was not going to just take the birth control pill. I wasn't just going to take an antidepressant. It didn't make sense. When I was seven years old, my mom's like, let's just have our tonsils up. And I said, let's not. God gave them to me for a reason. And I need them. So that's my story in a short version of it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So this is what I this is what I took away from that. A great doctor is one that you don't have to constantly go back to. Yeah. So good. Okay. So do you mind if I ask what led you to seeking a naturopathic doctor? What were you, you know, working through at the time? Yeah, so when I was 15 to 18 years old, right around that time, I had horrible menstrual cramps, like so bad I would keep over, and I would use all my energy throughout the week to get through my week. As a teenager, I should be having fun, having a blast, enjoying dating, doing all these fun things, and instead I would use all my energy to get through the week because I'm a high performer, and I was that as a younger, and that's how my family brought me up. And then I would just crash on weekends. And my dad is here with us now, 90 years old, and he used to say to me, I never thought I'd have a daughter who would give up. And it wasn't about giving up. I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the mind. I didn't have the right foods. I was struggling. And so I just kept searching, and I'm like, there's got to be an answer. And like what Aaron and Sarit teach, I was heavy, I was bloated, I was inflamed, but I had no idea. So as soon as they fixed my thyroid, as soon as I learned what to eat for my body, not Mary's, not Sally's, not Joe's, not Jack's, my body, I lost 60 pounds like this. It isn't about the weight, but it's about feeling great. I decreased all my inflammation in my body. And, and that, that's how to becoming an naturopath. So that was my struggle. Depression, mentally, inability to lose weight. Mm. Dep- did you say depression is the inability to lose weight? No, I struggled with depression, low energy, and inability to lose weight, all mm. three of those, and horrible menstrual cycles. Oh. Those were right? And what did you find out in the process? Where I mean, I can imagine that your hormones were probably just all out of whack, yeah? They were. My hormones were out of whack. My thyroid was not functioning properly. And if we're talking about any energy here, people don't realize how important the thyroid is. And it's not about just taking a pill for the thyroid. It's about getting the metabolism in the body to work properly. So when patients tell me I can never come off thyroid medicine, I'm going to tell you that it's not true because I came off thyroid medicine. You have a question? (laughs) Okay. Okay, I have to ask you this because our audience loves you. They respect you. They believe what you have to say. And I think that that's great because I would recommend that they do. And now I want to know from you because I have my own thoughts, but you are a doctor and I am only a doctor of humor. So, um, and I shouldn't say only because I kind of believe it's one of the best doctors. So with that being said, (laughs) Now, if somebody has hypothyroidism or, um, you know, a slow metabolism or an issue with their thyroid, does that mean they will forever never be able to lose weight and that that should be a legitimate excuse for them to just say, ah, well, it's because I have a low active thyroid? Absolutely no. So... Hold on, before you go further into that, I've heard so many times, and, I, and I'm saying this because I want to save you from yourself. If you are the person who's like, 
I won't ever be able to lose weight because I have hypothyroidism. I won't ever be able to lose weight because I have PCOS. I won't ever be able to lose weight because I have this or that condition that I've been diagnosed with. The body did not come out of the womb saying, yes, I'm so excited to be on earth and be sick for my entire life. Yay. Okay. So now you can go deeper into that. So uh, where do I start with this? So what Aaron is saying is when you step into the world, your parents gave you some genes. And this is the other thing that really I struggle with is that, um, I don't know why I just do that, sorry guys. The other thing that I struggle with is the fact that genes, epigenetics can be changed. So they'll say, I have thyroid conditions because my mother, my brother, my sister has thyroid conditions, right? I'm just using thyroid here. And that's simply not true. When you give the body what it needs, everything should work properly, including hormones. So it's a big question here because what I do is I do a deep dive into the body and I look at stress, which is cortisol. I look at thyroid hormone. I look at your external environment. So those three pieces are the main pieces that I look at. And when we're overloaded with chemical food, chemicals in our water, chemicals all around us, that is putting a load of toxicity on the body. When the body has a toxic load on it, which we can tie the thyroid to constipation in a minute, which is I know what we're talking about loading, when that load gets on the thyroid, the thyroid can't function. So we have a brain piece called the hypothalamus, speaks to the pituitary in the brain, which speaks to the thyroid or end organ, and it tells the body what to do. It tells the body to release more thyroid hormone. And then you release thyroid hormone, and every single thyroid from T4 to T3 activates our energy in our body. And I will tell you, if you have low thyroid or you're struggling with energy, you want to look at all of those. Whereas, again, no disrespect, I have many amazing colleagues that are endocrinologists, but they're just going to look at one number called your TSH just out of your brain, and they're going to look at your total T4 and say your thyroid is okay. I test nine markers, and I do a deep dive in, within the whole test. So back to Erin's original question, is just because you have low thyroid does not mean that you are not going to lose weight and feel your best. The goal is to figure out on a deep dive of what's going on in your body. Are you living in a mold environment? Do you have Lyme? Do you have a chronic disease that you don't know about? Is there mold? Like, it just depends. And all of that toxic load can throw the thyroid off. Great. And also, I just want to ask, because I know that people are like, oh my God, I, I need somebody like her in my life to figure out all my shit. Do you help people virtually? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. We'll get into that later. I just wanted to know for anybody who's like, it's going through their mind right now. Okay. Back yes. to you, Sarit. Yes. Back to you. Okay. So let's talk about bloating. Mm. Yeah. What I can imagine that so many things cause someone to feel bloated. Let, let's take a deep dive into that. Yeah. So can I ask a question before I do that? I want to know how many people on here right now that are enjoying all this amazing energy ever have their doctor ask them if they're constipated or not having bowels or not moving their bowels? Because the truth is, is we don't ask those questions. I do. But your primary care physician does not ask those questions if you're pooping. I pooped this morning. Who pooped this morning, guys? Yay! For Kaka. You did it too, huh? Callie says so hi. <laughs> so the deal is, is if you don't remove the toxicity which is in your bowels and you're not giving your body the food and the nutrition, I don't know how deep you want to go, but I can go deep on this, and you're not giving your body the fiber it needs, the quality vegetables, the quality fats, 30 grams of fiber in divided doses, you're not going to prep your gut to have a bowel movement, to have a move. 
And if you have huge amounts of stress, which we talked about on the last time, but I'm going to talk about it again for those that missed it, is if you're stressed or you have all these things coming in from the external environment and you never take time like I do to relax, breathe, meditate, gratefulness, then you're living in that sympathetic state. If you're in that sympathetic state, your body can't rest and digest. So that's that fight or flight. I got to get everything done until I relax. How that relates back to bloating is your body can't digest the food properly if you're constantly on the run. So here's a scenario that I love to share with people. Patients will say to me, if I wake up in the morning, run off to work, and I don't have a stool, like why? But when I'm home on weekends and I relax and I'm peaceful, I have a stool. Well, what's that message? What did I just share? The fact that you're not resting to allow your digestion to step in. And it really starts with chewing that piece of food, allowing different enzymes and hydrochloric acid into the stomach, preparing it for the small intestine. You've got a digestion process that you go through. And any can cause bloating. I don't want to go too fast because I get on a roll, but I just want to make sure that people are getting this. Yeah. So, okay. So what would you recommend? Let's say somebody is at a 10 out of 10 in terms of stress. Like, is there any tool that you would recommend to, you know, I guess, would you say lower the activation of the sympathetic system or activate the parasympathetic system? It's probably pretty similar, right? Because they work in adjunct to one another, right? Correct. So like Siri is saying, if you're in a sympathetic state, that fight or flight, that anxiousness, that nervousness, that run, run, go, go, you cannot assess the parasympathetic, which is the breath, the breathing. And I can't tell you in America, we can cut to just grab food and run. I can tell you that right away with patients, one of the lifestyle things that I teach them is please sit down, chew your food, and eat your meal. That's going to get you into the parasympathetic state. Because when you're in that parasympathetic state, that's when your food digests. And I'll be honest with you, if patients are having a really, really, really busy day, I just tell them not to eat within that time frame because you're not going to really digest the food anyway. And if you're working hard with Aaron and Street to get really great nutrition, it's almost like you're just dumping stuff in there. The other thing that you never want to do, which is so foreign, is drink when you eat. Because that's going to liquefy your digestive enzymes, and it won't allow you to prepare your hydrochloric acid digestion to actually allow the absorption of nutrients in the small intestine. So I would drink before my meals or half an hour after. See? So what I'm hearing you say <clears throat> is if I just make the simple switch of stopping the liquid beverages while I'm eating, I will get a six pack. I don't know about that, CP. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> love, it. love the transparency. You can't put me in there. <laughs> Hey, I love to drink while I eat. Yeah, we're we're getting into this because I'll tell you, Holly, you probably know this. I was I was born in the Middle East. I'm from Israel. So like, you know, when you go to the eastern side of the world, like, you know, the culture is a bit more ancient. And, you know, I grew up in a culture where we do not drink while we eat. And, you know, like with whenever we either when we have dinner or when we go out to eat, like, you know, Erin will sometimes ask me like, it's so weird how you don't drink when you eat. I'm like, I'm just used to it. That's how I grew up. Meanwhile, in America, like it's very like common that you drink while you eat. I'm like, I get it in before and I get it in after. But that's pretty cool to know that, you know, there is a validation to that. 
Okay. Yeah, because what happens is you're liquefying, if, and especially if you have low digestive enzymes and low stomach acid, which ties more to your A blood type as opposed to O blood type, and we talk about blood type diet. Sorry, you just read that in there. It's natural for me to talk about it because that's what I do. Right. In your A blood type, you have a tendency to have low hydrochloric acid, which is in medical fancy terms, hypochondria. And so what you're doing when you're drinking, you're liquefying that, and it thinks, and it's not able to pump up your digestive enzyme to actually get your digestion going. So one thing that will help you to get your digestion going, if it's simple, here's a little tip, drink lemon and water every morning before you eat. Or ginger, which is a digestive enzyme, you could drink ginger tea before you eat as well. So there's many herbal teas out that, that will prep, or bitters, as we call them, that will prep your digestion for you. You see this? I can't. What is it? You wanted to show you it's that. It's blurry if we go too close. My mom literally sent me this in the mail after the last time we had you on the show. This is my blood type. From the American, from the American Red Cross, a positive baby. Oh, of course she is. Um, okay, so lemon water is very uh, common in our community. So you know, you guys are getting an, a reaffirmation with regards to the benefits of lemon water. You know, we have a a program which we actually shared that with you, which we just like transitioned from a seasonal to like all year long type program. And one of the questions that we always, they, we always got in every single round is like, what is the purpose of lemon water? So, you know, like we tell them that all the time and it's really good that like you're bringing it in from another angle. So, okay, Holly, let's transition and let's talk about the brain gut connection and what is the correlation between stress and inflammation, if any? So I'm going to pull back a little bit so that I can set you up. Um, so let's talk about the gut just really briefly, and then that will set me into the brain, and that will set me into inflammation, if that's okay. So what I would like to share with you is what you eat is who you are. And so if you're eating processed foods and you turn the label over on a processed food and you literally can't pronounce what's in that processed food, your body can probably literally not digest it. If so, it was made in the lab, it's going to take a lab to break it down. That's correct. And the other piece of processed food is we have labs around the U.S. that want you to become addicted to those foods. We talked about it yesterday. We literally talked about it yesterday. Yeah. In a so they, they test your taste. They are testing taste buds in labs around the U.S. because they want you to buy your food. And in fact, a dear friend of ours here did the Pepsi challenge back in the day. He created all the marketing for it. And we just had this discussion about how, how, you know, how the challenge was and what that looked like. So anyway, let's deep back a bit. So what you eat is who you are, you feel, which is where I want to start with the gut. So we talked about eating 12 varying types of vegetables a day, a day, not a week, a day. So what that means is looking at your foods and looking at your, what feeds the gut is insoluble and soluble fiber, like chia seeds black seeds, oatmeal, psyllium, that feeds the gut, sets the bowel up for a healthy colon, as well as your vegetables. Okay, so now if you get that in your mind, that sets up your gut for a healthy microbiome. Now, like drop in the chat if you've heard that word before because it's pretty big. But I know that it's still getting out there, and I know that it's like been on my mind for years, but the marketing has talked a lot about your microbiome. The key to the microbiome is if your gut is healthy and it's processing food appropriately, 
Now you're going to have a lower risk for inflammation. So inflammation happens with high acid, which is sugary foods, acidic foods that you can't digest. That causes acid. Acid causes inflammation. There's three ways that we get rid of what the body doesn't need to function appropriately. Urine. Can I guess? Okay. Okay. Pooping, peeing, and sweating. Yes. Yes. That's how your body gets rid of toxicity. Your bowels are like your garbage can. You don't empty your bowels. Do you go around and not empty your garbage can? Because I know the answer is probably no. So the bowels get rid of what the body doesn't need. The other function of the bowels, which people don't talk about, is they're meant to reabsorb nutrients that they actually need for the body to If you're reabsorbing putrefaction and toxicity, that's causing inflammation in the brain, in the joints, in the belly, all across the body because the truth is is the body has to run and it needs to get rid of this toxicity so if we're living in that land of not pooping or even not drinking enough water then it's getting backed up and all of our skin conditions are related to foods and the external environment bloating is the same thing inflammation is the same thing I have patients come to me saying, I haven't been able to lose weight for a long time. And the truth is, it's not necessarily always the weight. It is for them because they get on the scale. But a lot of it is inflammation. Mm -hmm. mm. So how does that relate back, like Sari asked me, to the brain? If you eat a high sugary diet, your microbiome, which I'll talk about immune system in a minute, your microbiome, your gut, is your second brain. And everything that happens in the gut communicates back to the brain. So if you're eating garbage, thinking garbage, reacting to garbage, not relaxing, not loving yourself, which is where they first started this with your energy, it's going to go back up to your brain and that whole circulation is going to happen. If you have a large amount of acid and sugar in your body, it's going to go to the brain. The brain has to run on glucose. It has to. But an overabundant amount of glucose, which is what America doesn't talk about, how many people in our country, unfortunately, have type 2 diabetes? Hey, let's type talk about type 3. What about type 3 diabetes? Does anybody know what type 3 diabetes is? Because I'm on a mission to tell everybody what type 3 diabetes is. I want to see in the chat because this is important to me, and I'll tell you why. Did anybody even know that there is a type 3 diabetes? You, you do know. You just don't Tammy know Bell. that it's called type got 3. It. Tammy yeah, got would it. know that. Yeah, I got it. It's Alzheimer's. America is the only one that doesn't talk about type 3 being Alzheimer's. Can you guys hear me okay? Because I saw a question about the video. You're great. Okay. okay. So type 3 diabetes is Alzheimer's. And the reason why this is near and dear to my heart, it'll bring tears, is my father chose diabetes. My father's here with us. His brain is not functioning. Hmm. So I am on a mission. He doesn't, he just said to us the other day, like, I'd love to get a full body massage because I've never had one. Tell me, he might be on his daughter, he's never had a massage, really? Huge. So this is so important, you guys, to not eat a tremendous amount of sugar. It's really that simple. But yet we make it difficult. Type 3 diabetes is the brain becoming inflamed. The inflammation gets into the brain. Over amount of inflammation, 
the brain becomes completely inflamed. It's like we joke with fire coming out of our brain, but that's really what happens in Alzheimer's. There's a lot more, but I'm just surfacing it. Okay, so my so, question, can I ask you a question to build on top of that? So what is the correlation between when the brain is inflamed and what it does to our level of confidence, like on a behavioral basis? Yeah. So when the gut's inflamed and the brain is inflamed, you can suffer depression, anxiety, irritability. How does that happen? Oftentimes, in fact, type 2 diabetes, let me share this with you, that type diabetes, type 2 diabetes literally starts with hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. You start with low blood sugar and you start with low thyroid for quite a period of time. Eventually, you will, if it doesn't get fixed, down to diabetes, which is high sugar. High sugar, mm -hmm. have you ever heard of hangry? That's when your blood sugar completely drops and you're just like, oh my gosh, and you're like, like a bull in a china closet. Like, what can I eat? And like, you're grabbing all this food and you can't get enough food in quick enough when your blood sugar drops. So that's how that is actually related to type 2 diabetes. So that sugar drops off. Okay. okay. So I have, two, I have two questions to build on top of that. Considering that, are you suggesting that if someone is a type of person who experiences hangry not because you know they didn't eat for an entire day because they failed to plan but because they just they have a tendency to get hangry that there is a correlation to a higher likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes yeah because the risk of the, the start of type 2 diabetes is imbalanced blood sugar remember i'm not talking Type one different. I just want to clarify that. Type two is the way that we eat and the way that we take care of ourselves. Sure. Type one is an autoimmunity, which is I just always want to clarify because people get confused. So type two is an onset of a chronic disease, and my goal is to heal type two. So what happens is the body has to get rid of sugar because it can't function with high sugars. And so you have um you have a marker in your body, hemoglobin, and that brings oxygen to the tissues. I believe many other naturopaths, like the world believes more oxygen decreases diagnoses because it can, it, like cancer can't live in a high oxygen state. So what Sarita is saying is if we have high sugar, we have to get sugar out of the body. So hemoglobin, which should hold four oxygen molecules, ends up holding glucose molecules to rid the body of sugar. So now you're getting more acid because of the sugar. You're getting less oxygen in the body and you're at high risk for diabetes. So hemoglobin A1C tells me what the body is doing three months back with sugar. Glucose is immediate. Okay, so I, I wanna ask a couple questions to clear things up for people. So. Um, type two diabetes, is it the road to type three diabetes? Isn't is type three diabetes, the point of no return, or can you come back from that? That's a really good question. So in my training, so I'm just breathing deeply because it's like, how do I explain this? In my training, we've been taught neurologically that we can't flip the brain back and we can't stop the progression of dementia, type three diabetes. However, with some patients, I've been able to stop the fast progression of it. And I don't know that we have enough research to 100% answer, will I be able to stop that if I'm already on that journey, which is what Eric's asking. But what I do know is there's lots of brain studies, like Dr. Amen is one of them that does a, a tremendous amount of brain studying around what to eat, how to eat, and how to heal the brain, and when the brain is inflamed. So he does a test that evaluates where the brain is inflamed and where it's like Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese means that the brain's not firing appropriately. 
question? Yeah, look, I'm a I'm a believer in miracles. And I think yeah. I think anything is possible. But really what I wanted to get clear for anybody listening is this severe importance of um, really addressing if you are pre-diabetic or if you are currently type two diabetic, because when you do reach that point, it is extremely difficult proven to come back. Now, if you're type two diabetic, there's been many recoveries from that. There's been, yeah. you know, that is something, but it's, you're on the road to the wrong direction, unless you can take control of the sugars in your body. Now, now the other thing that I wanted to ask you to clarify is because I think a lot of people have a fear of fruit because there's sugar in it. Now, when is it, when it is the time, if any, where you would say that it is actually inappropriate for somebody to be eating even a fruit? Yeah, again, it's hard to answer for a general audience, but I'll do my best. So let me start by saying this. If somebody's diabetic, the only fruits that they get, even or pre-diabetes in my clinic, the only fruits that they get are low glycemic fruits, which are berries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. Um, and I only allow them to eat them in the morning because they get a clear, really strong nutrition plan from me that they get to adhere to along with supplements and herbs. So I prefer patients who have blood sugar challenges to eat their sugars and their starches first thing in the morning. If they're pre-diabetic, they don't bring from me right off. They get protein, vegetables, and fats. And, and it's not a low carbohydrate diet. Everybody goes there. It's a high carbohydrate diet, but high carbohydrate in vegetables and your starchier vegetables, right? So um, that's what the key is. And then I don't really, especially if you have blood sugar challenges, I don't really love people eating like fruits at night because, especially if they have sleep challenges, which a lot of patients do, if their blood sugars are all over the place. Because you want protein and fats, possible carbs, which is why I work with a patient one on one. We've got to figure out what allows you to rest and sleep. The fact you don't want to eat sugar because sugar can fire you up, and, which is fruit, and, and not allow you to rest as well. So I prefer you to eat fruit and sugar even in the beginning of the day, in the morning. So for general health, because in our community, a lot of times we're like, hey, if you've been told not to eat fruit, like, in the big scheme of things, fruit is a great, there's a lot of vitamins and minerals is a high nutrient density, you know, but fruits, one of those like, oh, you're on one side of the table, right? Where you're like, no, it's bad sugar. Ah, or you're like, no, it's really healthy and good. And so the point of this is there's a time and a place for everything for every person, depending on where you're at. If you are type two diabetic recommendation from Dr. Donahue is if you're going to have uh, fruit, have it in a low glycemic berries in the beginning of the day. Okay. Generally speaking. Um, but for any other relatively healthy person, same or no? Yeah. Any, any relatively healthy person, I would hundred percent prefer fruit because of what I think Erin is getting to is the fiber in the fruit, the antioxidants in the fruit, and it comes from our earth. So if you're going to say, um, um, would I eat this like piece of chocolate or would I eat this fruit? I would 100% prefer like fruit. And fruit has huge nutritional value in it. But again, it's figuring out what works for you as an individual, which is why I love what I do. Because I don't just say, like what what Aaron just said, here's a catch-all. You follow this protocol. We figure out what works for you. And if you don't have blood sugar challenges and you're working out and you're building muscle and you're needing glucose for your energy throughout the day, that's going to take us to confidence. Then you want that energy build up in your body and you need that glucose and protein to build your muscle for the muscle to function. I want to say thank you. You're a great educator. I'm not sure if anybody told you this before and I share this with you because here, here's what I, what I'll tell you that that's a big 
like issue that I see just, you know, um, with regards to a lot of like, quote unquote, gurus and experts is that, you know, you go back to the general vision while explaining the details, because it is really easy to take away from this conversation. Ah, I'm only going to eat, you know, like strawberries and raspberries. Meanwhile, if we're being really honest, if somebody is pre-diabetic or has diabetes type two, it is not, it is not the berries or the apples that got you there. And this is the, yeah. this is the real conversation is that society is too soft to confront the truth. So it is a lot easier to look at the details because when we see a flashy object like, ha, I just found a golden nugget, you clinch to it. However, let's all remember you guys that the reason why, you know, the country is currently where it's at, it's not because people are eating Granny Smith apples you at don't, night. You don't become type two diabetic by eating too much fruit. Right. It's because we're it's because we're drinking soda and we're eating like garbage at night. That's what gets us here. So let's not forget yeah, like the big picture point. because that's what gets us here in the first place. Those details are fabulous and I love how you always go back to big picture because you know, for me, it took me 11 years to figure out like the real truth. And I remember like every time I would educate myself, I'll grab one golden nugget and I will try to apply this golden nugget, but I would, I won't apply the big picture. So then two weeks later, I'm like, ah, I don't think it works. No, no. You, it's like, you, you, you just don't get the point. So I share this with you guys, because let's remember to keep the main thing, the main thing. That's right. 100%. Yeah. So good. There's one last thing that I want to bring up. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit because I know that, uh, we talked about the, uh, the attempt to get people literally and physically addicted to sugar. Um, and yesterday in one of our programs, the raw program, we talked about um, on their coaching call, there is literally scientists whose only job that they get paid to do is to figure out the exact grams of sugar or sodium or whatever that will get you physically addicted to the product that will make you want to buy it again and again and again and again. So for anybody who wants to understand this much better, there is actually, have you seen the, uh, the movie, that sugar film? Yeah. Okay. So I, I think it's on Netflix or YouTube, or I think it's on YouTube I think it's on YouTube and yeah. it's called that sugar film. Great, if you great. want, if you want to scare yourself out of eating shitty sugar, go watch that film. Um, but it really does a great job. It's this Australian guy who did this experiment basically where he ate a certain, uh, the average number of grams of sugar that an, a typical American eats on a daily basis, but he could not have it in candy or soda. He had to have it in foods that was kind of hidden like yogurts or granola or, um, you know, teriyaki sauce. So he had to figure out how to consume and he saw doctors along the way. He had his certain metrics taken, um, in the process. And it's a really cool journey to watch him go through that and to see what really happens in your body when you're just consuming, even if you're health conscious and you think something that you're eating is good, but you don't know how to read the ingredient label, or you don't understand the that big picture that there's mm -hmm. 999 different names for sugar, probably on purpose. Cause why can't we just call it sugar? Um, so yeah, that sugar film. Okay. Callie says hello to everybody. Um, okay. So what also I want to touch on the fact that, you know, we talked about this with Dr. Furman as well. Like, it's definitely not a mystery why, you know, depression and anxiety continues to rise, just considering, you know, like how highly processed the American diet is and, you know, the correlation that that has to do with our mood just based on the foods that we eat. Can you touch on that just a little bit? Yes, totally. So if we if we kind of go back to the gut, I know, sorry guys, we got off on a sugar piece, but the sugar is related to the gut, right? So um, when your gut, like you make serotonin in your gut, and the serotonin, that's most of your gut. So that's why antidepressants 
stop working after a while mm -hmm. um, because your gut does not have the health that it needs, the microbiome, in order to communicate back to the brain for you to have those feel-good receptors to feel great. So what happens with the anxiety and the nervousness that Sarit is asking about um, we're having a higher amount of that because there is so much sugar and because the gut is so heavily inflamed with acid that the acid is not allowing our brain to run properly. That's really as simple as it is without getting into huge diagnosis and detail because your brain is inflamed, you're thinking inflamed thoughts. And that anxiety, that irritability, that agitation, I will 100% tell you all day long that goes away when you get your nutrition plan in check and one that works for you. Say it again louder for the people in the back. 100% you will get your anger, your irritability, your anxiety, your agitation, your frustration, will get in check when you're eating the right nutrition, including fats. What's the first thing people cut out? Fats. Why? Fat does not make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. So if you get your nutrition in check for you as an individual, then you will not have that mental imbalance, I guess is the best thing, because I'm not sure what people are struggling with. Yeah. So you get to figure out what works for your body. Working with Aaron and Sarita, working with somebody like myself, because you cannot, I'm sorry, figure it out sometimes on your own. Because you're doing what Sarita was saying. You're trying to read all the things and just try that one thing. Try this one is what my friend does. But what about your metabolism? Because you are unique as an individual. Please hear that. You are as unique as nobody else. You are special. And your metabolism is special. And you, everything about you is special. And so when you get yourself to the point of health and feeling less bloated and feeling less inflammation, you are naturally going to feel good, which is going to take us back to what Aaron started with. This is so powerful. So you guys, why we absolutely love working with Dr. Donahue is because she does the nitty gritty technical details of all of your like inner workings um, with natural healing. Sari and I help you with your habits because if your lifestyle habits remain the same, you can do all of the things Dr. Donahue teaches you how to do and tells you to do, and you can follow the plan. But if your mind gets in the way of yourself, or when you go to a social event and you don't know how to say no to things, or when you're emotional and you don't have an outlet for those emotions, but to eat or drink them, that's how Sarit and I help. Okay. So it's a combination. And like Dr. Donahue said, you're very unique. You are so uh, individual. And so the prescription, I guess, if you will, will look different for you than it will for your neighbor or for your spouse or for your um, kids. And so that's actually like why we put together the programs that we do and, and connect with the people that we do. I think Dr. Donahue has something special too. Yeah. I don't really know what goes yeah, on. Yeah. I love sentence. how you said, you know, you can work with Aaron and Sri, you can work with me. What if you were to work with us together? So uh, we've mentioned to you guys the Rocking Body Transformation Program and the very special invitation that we're giving you guys uh, for anybody who's participating in the eight-day confidence climb. And we believe in the power of what Dr. Donahue does along with the, the power of our programs because we simply don't know what we don't know, you guys. You need the structure you need the support and you need the systems in order to, number one, get the intricate details of your body in check along with the right support, support system and behavioral shifts that will help you to continue to sustain that because you can know all the things inside. However, it's not about what you know up here. It's about what you do about it. 
It is about who are you becoming on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're here, you know that you're great. But I'll tell you this. If you're feeling down on yourself because you're feeling bloated, you're not bringing into what, whether it's the conference room that, you know, Holly, you're in right now, or whether it's wh whatever it is that you do, whether it's, you know, the kitchen in your home with your family, you're bringing a more compromised version of yourself. And you know that you're up for greatness. So um, we've already shared with you guys the raw transformation pro the, the rocking body transformation program and what this is all about. Um, I wanna, can we go to the page with, you know, what Dr. Donahue is going to give? Yeah, quick? I'm going to, I'm going to briefly overview this in the case that you, you were not here over the last couple of days, but the rock and body transformation is an eight week program that you get access to for 10 weeks because we believe in progress, not perfection. So you might take uh, a couple of days to get started. You might kind of fall off the wagon a little bit somewhere. We want to give you that extra time and access to the platform. Um, and then there's live Q and a sessions each week. There's a live component because all of our coaches are in that platform, communicating with you, answering your questions, helping you through the problems that you are having or the, the struggles or the challenges that you're working to overcome. You've got, you know, uh, coaching sessions from Sarit and I via video that we've done. You've got worksheets that you can do to help you to get your thoughts onto paper to make it more real for yourself. Um, there's uh, little nuggets of uh, audios that we plug into that are kind of like little mini podcast sessions from me and Sarit um, to help you stay motivated and inspired throughout that time. Along with... Let's not forget the daily bite-sized action steps because ultimately that's how you're going to build your habits, right. right? Through daily action steps that are easy to digest, that are easy to follow through because simplicity is key. Yeah, there's, you know, and not to mention the entire community. The, the community is like half the battle already because the, the content we've put in the same platform as the community, whereas before it was split, half of it was on Facebook, half of it was somewhere else. Uh, and so we've put it all into one place so that you're not distracted by other things that are happening on Facebook or, or what Gina said to Sally. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, and so we're going to do something special for you guys as well. Um, a couple of bonuses. Uh, I told you two weeks complimentary access to the platform in addition to the eight weeks. Uh, two months complimentary access to the fit subscription, which is our entire database of workout programs. The third bonus is a complimentary entry to a three day event that we're going to be doing um, in the virtually. And then the fourth bonus is a cool new feature that we added, which are, is pods, which is essentially a small group that's going to be capped out at eight people. So you can connect better with people. You can feel safer or more secure to open up because it's not a whole, you know, mass of people, just a few people. They can become like your tight knit group. Um, and, and to hold you accountable and a coach leads your group every week for 30 minutes. So that's a new feature the that same we, coach. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're doing all of this, uh, total value of what is it? $1,600, $1,700 for 497. But, uh, we are actually, since we have Dr. Donahue here, She's going to, she's been very generous and she's going to throw in a complimentary group session with you guys, a small group health evaluation. Um, and I mean, if you guys loved what she had to say today. Um, Dr. Donahue, do you, can you touch a little bit on like, what, what does that look like a like health evaluation? Yeah, no, I love this question, and I love what they're doing, you guys. This is fantastic, because the first thing is that habits drop off, and that's what happens with my patients. So please, take this is an amazing offer. So what a health evaluation looks like is looking at your basic labs, and if you have them, fantastic. And then I'm going to look at patterns in your labs without going into medical naming, because I'll lose you all. And I'm going to figure out and help support you in how, how you can actually create a treatment plan and step into whole health, what that looks like. So we'll do a call, we'll evaluate what's going on, you bring your labs, 
and we'll just do we'll just do a read about it. It's really that simple. So and then at the end, I'll work with you on a plan, and I'll work closely with Aaron and Sari as what they're working on with you. You and together, and it's so time because this is so important. You can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. And a customized treatment plan for you is 100%. I can't tell you. The other thing is so many people take supplements that they just may not even need. And they're taking it because their friends are taking it. That's We're right. That's right. That that is so good. And just so you know, there's also a payment plan of two payments of uh, two seventy seven when you uh, check out the link that we provided below. And um, man, there was something. Just so you guys know, like Holly, thank you so much for you know just dropping this gift. This is so generous of you, you guys. That's a value of two ninety seven. Like that in and of itself. So like. We are trying to do everything that we can in our power to literally collaborate with powerful leaders because we know you guys that, you know, on a higher level, it is just, it is all really a scam. I'm just going to say it shamelessly to make you be dependent. Okay. Like it is no wonder why the biggest companies out there are, you know, big pharma, big soda, and big food. They're all just, you know, getting you addicted on sugar, and then they're, you know, giving you medications that stop working after a month. I'm not saying it for every single medication. So please take this with a grain of salt. However, you heard what Dr. Downey who says there is a better way. There is a better way. And it's called, you know, shifting your lifestyle habits, and getting in the know with regards to what matters. And the only way for you to, you know, uh, be able to shift that is, you know, to get the support that you need from people who really have the answer and who want to help you. So I just want to say thank you for just, you know, being a part of, you know, this, this thing that's going on and just collaborating and, and, you know, getting it really quickly, like, because you said that there is a better way and we believe there is a better way. Yeah. Nobody go do anything crazy with your medication. Like if you're taking it, like, right. We are, we are not your physician. We've not been in contact with you. We're not here to give you medical advice. We're just saying there is a better way. So if you want to find a better way, start talking to the, the right people that you need to talk to to find a better way. Dr. Donahue is going to be one of those people. For sure. I love that. Yes. Please no patient. And honestly, I want to bounce off of that just so you all know. I actually don't touch people's medication. But what I do do is when their body gets a balance, their doctor's forced to take them off the medication. So if people come in medicated, the person that prescribed it, sometimes medicines are used for more than one condition. I don't always know what the doctor's talking about. I work with their doctor. However, on many occasions, say for example, cholesterol, their cholesterol gets too low, they get to come off cholesterol medication. So I love that you said that because you don't just stop your medicine. Don't just stop your antidepressants. Don't just stop anything without a practitioner, please, because that can make it worse for you. But what you can do is once we build the body up, then we start doing it. Powerful. Powerful. Okay. A couple more things, by the way, to uh, join the rocking body and, you know, of course, get all these bonuses, including Dr. Danny, who's uh, you have until you have until Friday at midnight. Okay, just so you know, um, I want to get to today's challenge. And today's challenge is going to include one of, you know, the benefits that you've shared, Dr. Danny, who as a matter of fact, us ourselves did not even know what one of the action steps was going to be until, you know, we heard some of the golden nuggets that you've dropped and a decision has been made. Um, so you guys, every single day, you know, there are three different action steps for you to follow through with as a way to build your confidence. Today, we're working on continuously building your confidence by also reducing the bloating. Hey. Okay. So 
Uh, first action step for today is, of course, to get in the know and to watch the daily recording. For those of you guys who are live, you're already doing it. Congratulations. The second thing is, Dr. Donahue, we're actually doing a marathon over a, ma over a span of eight days. So that being said, uh, get your 3.3 miles in, whether that means you're running, you're walking, you're crawling, you're jogging, whatever it takes, just get it done, okay? You do not realize how much you're capable of when you incrementally and consistently pursue something on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Today's day seven. And then for your third action step is you're going to follow through with one of the things that we talked about today. And what I have chosen for you, the ES Army, is whatever meal you're having today, you're going to be present and you're going to chew your food and stay away from social media, your phone, or anything that distracts you. It's just you and the plate or you and your family, whatever it may be. I have a testimonial to share really quickly in 60 seconds for this. Over the last two days, I ate my food at the kitchen table without looking at my phone or doing anything. It was extremely foreign. I am not used to it. I usually just eat in front of the computer or I like smash down some like Greek yogurt and berries and then I'm like, I'm on to the next thing. And over the last two days, I actually made scrambled eggs and I sat at the table. I had a cup of berries and I had scrambled eggs and then I have a green juice and I just sat there and I just ate it. And I'll tell you something. I didn't feel hungry like I usually feel hungry the next time I felt hungry. It was a very bizarre thing, but I'll tell you, it works. Yeah. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because if you're, if, if you are a busy person, if you've got a lot going on, guarantee you you're eating in front of your phone or in front of the computer or TV. Or how do I know that? Well, I'll tell you. What, one meal in the day we eat present. The other meal in our day, well, I, I can you. only speak for myself. Speak for yourself, Sari. <laughs> is I eat it in front of the computer while I do other shit. So, you know, like we're doing this challenge, you know, with you. So I'm like, ah, I know I need that. <laughs> so we're all doing it. We're all doing it. Okay, so those are your three action steps. Dr. Donahue, is there anything else that you want to add before you get back to your beach adventure? <laughs> no, I just love you guys. And like, honestly, this is at work to me. That's what I want to say. Like, this is just my heart pouring into each and every one in your audience to actually heal. Like, heal and figure out something that works for you. And with Erin and Sari teaching you habits. That's where my patients lose it. So please hear them, walk through this journey. The more you do things, the easier it is. And it just becomes natural. And I just want to say thank you for having me. And uh, I love all of you guys. I am here for you. And just to step in and get dressed. And everyone's like, what are you doing today, right? Because you're used to seeing me in my bathing suit and shorts. I said, I get to go do what I love. And that's healing. Oh, it, it is true. It is very healing to give. Thank you. You guys, drop some love. Drop some hearts. So good. Thank you so much, Dr. Donahue, for, you know, taking time out of your vacation to add value to this community. We truly appreciate it, as you can see. And... Yeah, you guys, uh, Dr. Donahue is amazing. Also, where would be the best way to get in contact with you? Uh, can you pop in the chat, simplehealthnh.com would be best. And then if you, um, once you're on that page, click work with Dr. Donahue and just schedule a call. Typically, I drop the link in, but sorry, guys, I'm on this, like, fancy computer in front of me. I don't know where everything is, but if you drop that in, and then once you're on that website, it'll say, work with Dr. Donahue, just book a call with me. I have several of your peeps coming in and booking calls, but that's what I'm here for, and don't hesitate to pick a time and day and 
I'm down here until April, so April will open up. But if you need something before that, just reach out to Aaron and Sarita and they know how to wrap it. Yep. Thank you. And Dr. Donahue, we look forward to seeing you next week for the group um, health consultation with anybody who's joining. So thank you all for joining us today. I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed day seven. We told you that we're going to bring you a very special surprise. Tomorrow is going to be a big day as well. So uh, tune in tomorrow, Dr. Donahue. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're beautiful. Enjoy the rest of your day today and the sunshine. And ES Army, we will see you guys tomorrow. Much love. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Love you.